Hi all, welcome back to Edumendo. In the previous video, we have seen the different phases of a compiler and particularly the analysis part of a compiler. That is, we have gone through the front end or the first four phases of a compiler. That is the lexical analysis phase, syntax analysis phase, semantic analysis phase and finally the intermediate code generation phase. In that video, we have seen that a source program which consists of a stream of characters is fed to the lexical analyzer phase. And the lexical analyzer converted the stream of characters into stream of tokens. And this stream of tokens is fed to the syntax analysis. And the syntax analysis phase, which is also known as the parser, converts this stream of token into a grammatical structure, which is known as a syntax tree or the parse tree. Now, the syntax tree or parse tree is fed to the semantic analysis, where we have done the type checking. And the result of semantic analysis phase is an annotated pulse tree. And finally, the intermediate code generation phase created an intermediate code from this annotated pulse tree. Right? That is what we have seen in the previous video. And we have also seen about the symbol table. That is, during the above phases, when we discover the lexemes, we convert those lexemes into tokens. And the tokens are having the format token name along with the attribute values. So, these tokens will be stored into the symbol table. And symbol table is nothing but just a data structure to store the values of those tokens. And in this video, we will be going through the last two phases of a compiler, which is known as the synthesis part, the synthesis phases of a compiler. It is also known as the back end of a compiler. Okay. So, the synthesis phase or the back end consists of two phases. First one is the code optimization phase, and second one is the code generation phase. So, the output of the analysis part of the front end of a compiler, which is the intermediate code, is fed to the code optimization of a compiler. And what do you mean by code optimization? Optimization means we are trying to achieve a better code. Better code means it can be a code with much lesser number of lines or a code which consumes less power or the one which requires only little space, the size is less. So, all this contribute to a better code. Okay. So, in code optimization phase, we are trying to convert our code so that we will get a better code. Okay. So, actually the output of this code optimization phase will be, it will be also an intermediate code, but it will be an optimized intermediate code. And this optimized code is then fed to the code generation phase, which will produce the final target program, which can be either an assembly code or it can be a machine code getting it right okay so let's go to the code optimization phase so this is the fifth phase of a compiler code optimization so our source program was first fed to the analysis phase that is a friend end which produces the intermediate code as output this intermediate code is then optimized to get an optimized intermediate code okay so for intermediate code we used a three address code in the previous video we have seen that for intermediate code, we used three address code as example. And the code was t1 is equal to int to float of 60. If you haven't watched the previous video, please go and watch that video. Then only you will understand how I got this intermediate code. Okay. I will write our source statement here. Position is equal to initial plus rate into 60. And we converted this source program or this source statement into the following intermediate code. And for that translation, how we converted that initial statement into this intermediate code, please go and watch my previous video. Okay, so this was our intermediate code. That is, this position, it was the ID 1, initial was the ID 2, rate was the ID 3, ID means identifier. And this 60, it was in integer. So, we converted it into float, right? So, the first step was into to float of 60 and we stored that value in a temporary variable t1. Then what we do? So, this 60 was stored in t1, right? Now, we multiplied t1 with id3 and we stored that result in t2. So, id3 into t1 is stored in t2. Then what we have to do? This much is t2. So, id2 plus t2 is stored in t3. So, T3 is equal to ID2 plus T2. So, finally, this whole portion, that is this RHS side is our T3. 
Now what we have to do? We have to store the value of t3 inside the identifier 1, right? So finally, id1 is equal to t3. So this was our three address code or this was our intermediate code. Now what we have to do? We have to perform the code optimization. That is we have to make this code better. Better in the sense it can be a code with a lesser number of lines or it can be a code which consumes less power or which takes less memory and so on. Okay. So what we have to do is instead of using this into to float operation or instead of using this into to float conversion, we can directly give the value 60 as decimal value. If you give the value 60 as a floating value, then we don't want to convert this integer to float, right? That means we can write 60 as 60.0. So in this case, we don't want to use this into float conversion. Okay, so that's our first step. So we can write this t1 directly as 60.0, right? The value of t1 was into to float of 60. That is 60.0 is stored in t1. So instead of writing id3 into t1, we can directly write id3 into 60.0. Okay, so id3 into 60.0. This we can store in a temporary variable t1. Okay, so we have done till here and the value of t2 is now stored in t1. Okay, now what we have to do? We have to add this value along with the id2, right? That is id2 plus t1. And we have to store this value inside a temporary variable. But here we can see that the temporary variable was t3. And we are not performing any more operations on t3. We are directly storing it into id1, right? So instead of using this temporary variable, we can directly store it into id1. Understood? So this is our optimized code. Thus, you can see that the previous four instructions was converted to simply two instructions. Okay, so we obtained an optimized code. Now we have to fed this optimized code to the last phase of a compiler which is the code generation phase. And that code generation phase will produce the final target code. So our next phase is code generation phase. So the input to code generation phase will be our optimized code and the output will be our final target code. And the target code can be either an assembly code or it can be a machine code. Okay. So this was our optimized code t1 is equal to id3 into 60.0 id1 is equal to id2 plus t1 this was the optimized code we obtained in the last phase right now we have to convert this optimized code into the target code here we are converting it into an assembly code okay so assembly code requires some registers registers to load the values of the identifiers here we can see that id3 is used so the value of id3 should be first load into some registers. Similarly, the value of id2 should also be loaded into some registers. In case of an assembly language, we will be doing the operations between the registers only. Okay. And finally, the final result can be stored back to the respective identifier. So, let's check what will be the assembly code. So, the first task is to load the value of id3 into some registers. So, first, Let's load the value of id3 into some register, say r2. So here, what we are doing is, we are loading the value of id3 into the register r2. Okay. And here, we will be using the letter f, ldf. f means, we are dealing with floating values. This id3 is a floating value. Now, we have the value of id3 inside the register r2. Now, what we have to do? We have to multiply this r2 with the value 60. So, we have to multiply mul f. Mul means multiplication instruction and f to denote that these are floating values. R2, comma, R2, comma, 60.0. We are using the symbol hash to indicate that this is a constant value. So, we have to multiply the constant value that is a floating value 60 with the value stored inside the register R2 and we have to store the result into register r2 okay this instruction you can also write it as mul f r2 comma 60 here also we will multiply the r2 with 60 and we will store the result back to r2 okay both the notations are correct just remember one thing that after the instruction whatever instruction we have used here 
the first operand after the instruction it is our destination so if we use three arguments here then what we will do is we will perform that operation over the last two arguments and we will store the result into the first argument okay but if you are using only two arguments in that case we will perform the operation on that two arguments and we will store the result back to the first argument always the first argument will be the destination now what we have to do now we have multiplied 60 with r2 that is the identifier 3 id3 and the result is stored in r2 right so the value of this t1 is now stored inside the register r2 now we have to add the value of r2 along with the id2 right t1 plus id2 means we have to add the value inside the register r2 with id2 so for that first we have to load the value inside this id2 into some registers okay so first step is to load the value of id2 into some register r1 and then we have to add the values of r1 and r2 so add add f to indicate that it's a floating value r1 comma r1 comma r2 okay that means we are adding the values of r1 and r2 and storing the result back to r1 so this statement we can also write it as how we can write it add f r1 comma r2 simply we can write it like this okay so we'll add the values of r1 and r2 and show the result back to r1 that is what we done here also so you can use both the methods now our final result is stored in the register r1 so what is our last step we have to store that result into the identifier id1 right so the value of r1 should be stored back to the identifier id1 so store stf st to indicate that it's a store instruction so to which we have to store what's our destination destination is id1 and what's the value we have to move r1 so the value inside the register r1 should be stored to the identifier id1 so this is our final target code understood so here you can see that how we have converted our initial statement into target code what was our initial statement position is equal to initial plus rate into 60 so we can see that this single statement is converted to five statements and that's why we are using high level language to write our source program so the source program will be in a high level language so that we can write it easily as well as we can understand it easily but the machine does not know or the computer does not know the high level language what the computer understand is the machine language or the assembly language so that's why we are converting this source code into our target code just like a google translator what the google translator do it will convert one language into another language right similarly this compiler it's also a language processor which converts one language into another language here the first language is known as our source language which will be a high level language and the output or the target language will be a low level language which can be either a machine language or, or a assembly language okay so these are the phases of a compiler and you will be going through all these phases in detail in the coming modules the first module will be about the lexical analyzer second and third module will be about the syntax analyzer and so on so see you soon in the next video till then bye bye